Um, today, I'm very excited to talk about my research work that I did uh, during my postdoc work at Princeton University, where I built uh, optogenetic tools to understand how transcriptional works and what we were interested in understanding uh, the dynamics and the complex regulation that drives eventually pattern in developing embryos. And so you can see on the top, this is a fruit fly embryo at a particular stage of the development. And what you're looking at uh, these green dots as, as these are individual nuclei, and these purple dots are actually the um, nascent mRNA production. And what you see distinct feature here is that is due to added this optogenetic perturbation system where we, once we uh, manipulate protein of certain factors, that will induce these mRNA production. So this is totally light dependent and that you can understand to uh, kind of like uh, how that transcription works. So let's go uh, kind of into details. What I'm really interested in uh, trying to understand how certain uh, stimuli are processed by cells. And so there, there could be multiple inputs. They are being, the, the processing kind of so far for us being kind of like works as a black box. So we don't know how those regulations are occurring. And then we have some ways of understanding the gene output or cellular output that will eventually lead to cell, uh, either cellular defects or normal cellular functions. And so what I'm trying to kind of understand how these uh, processes are occurring, whether we can have some biophysical parameters to explore those parameter space. And so the tools are uh, kind of uh, uh, details I want to kind of uh, incorporate into is uh, how certain genes those are. So these are kind of represent DNA. They are not always, they, they can be um, certain genes. Those will be producing these new gene output. And these genes are not always on. So depending upon the transcription factors, how they recognize certain sequences on these uh, genes, turn them on, and that produces new molecules, such as here, mRNA, and that eventually becomes a protein, and that has a certain lifetime. And so these all different aspects of these molecular events lead to these uh, gene output and cellular, um, cellular processes that, that is... Uh, governing this uh, whole transition. And so what I'm trying to kind of build, uh, whether I could build some of these uh, quantitative and biophysical tools to kind of gain insight uh, about these black, black box, uh, which is how cellular uh, systems actually process certain stimuli. And before kind of going in details about this specific project, I thought I should give a bit of overview of what I have been doing for my PhD and some um, uh, short um, postdoc. So during this time, what I try to understand how nuclear proteins, specifically transcription factors are organized or uh, dynamic in the cell nucleus. And so for that, I build this light sheet based uh, microscope that allows me to create a cross section in any part of the cell. Um, and that can give us the detail how these protein molecules are diffusing in and out of the volume. And that, with that, we could correlate those uh, intensity changes over time. And that gives us details about this, this is a cross section of a cell nucleus. You can see uh, the diffusion coefficient values can vary from um, tenfold almost in the cell nucleus, and they have a different compartments where uh, protein could be slower or faster diffusion, depending upon the cellular state. And then later, uh, what I try to establish or advance this tool further, uh, not only given one uh, section for the cell nucleus, but you can imagine cell nucleus is a whole 3D volume of around tens of micron of uh, diameter, and what we wanted to explore uh, throughout that whole 3D volume. And so same tool could be applied in different planes. And with that, we build out this, uh, how these proteins are heterogeneous in nuclear space. And then we try to understand particular one pr protein called polymerase two, 
uh, in different uh, cellular uh, stimuli, like when they are uh, serum stimulated, they tend to be slower uh, as when you remove, starve the cells, uh, they, they have faster uh, diffusion in the cell nucleus. And so what we try to understand how these protein-protein interaction of polymerase II could be uh, governed by these uh, you know, bigger clusters, and that has effect on the dynamics as well as the functional uh, implications of these uh, uh, molecules. And so that, that was nice to kind of establish how the system work and then also try to find out some of these functional details. So these were kind of like quantitative imaging tools that allowed us to kind of explore a wide range of uh, parameters, biophysical parameters uh, in living systems. And so now what I'm trying to kind of establish now uh, or ask these questions about how particular uh, biological patterns arise. So one of the uh, simple um, idea in the field was uh, where these are uh, small diffusible molecule can um, uh, spread across the length of a tissue and depending upon their concentration or thresholds, uh, different genes could be uh, activated. And so that's what uh, these blue and white and red means. There are these patterns emerge. And so there are a lot of um, yeah, experimental and all these uh, mathematical models uh, exist in the field to understand how these patterning may arise. And there is kind of now newer idea in the field where, uh, which is also gaining um, or um, has quite a bit of support, like there, these basically <clears throat> patterning arise due to complex network level interactions. And uh, in, in living biological system, often the problem is uh, uh, arise to us uh, in terms of like experiments, uh, since they are high, um, to kind of like interconnected in space and time. So it's hard to dis, uh, in, entangle them uh, very specific, uh, kind of like temporally and sp uh, spatially. So what, uh, um, and so now this kind of, uh, um, these two kind of ideas are uh, trying to kind of give some details how different these patterns like digit formation occur in, in humans or uh, mammals, depending upon the threshold of these concentrations, uh, uh, these uh, digit specification arise. They also um, teach us quite a bit of detail about how these neural tube uh, segment structure arise. And also, uh, so th they have like wide range of applications in different biological system. Here, this shows a pattern formation in fruit fly uh, embryos. And so now, uh, one thing we thought of uh, whether we could use these uh, live uh, uh, fruit fly embryos where we have ways to understand how transcription factors could, uh, uh, could induce these patterns of gene expression and whether we could un gain insight about uh, uh, gene expression and uh, transcriptional dynamics. So what we thought, whether we could use, uh, apply some of these optogenetics and live mRNA sensor-based tools to understand uh, how input changes of transcription factor in terms of like here, because gives rise the pattern formation in uh, these living fruit fly embryos. And so idea is now to understand uh, manipulate the levels of transcription factor uh, using optogenetics, and then also follow uh, the transcriptional output in real time using some of these live mRNA sensor. If you want to kind of uh, uh, know more about what exactly we use, uh, I could talk that uh, later um, after the talk. And so the idea here is something uh, like we often do in uh, neurons, where neurons could be highly interconnected and it's really hard to find out uh, which neurons are connected functionally to other neurons. And uh, often people use, uh, they stimulate certain part of the neurons and then see how those ne network of neurons are connected or interconnected. So same idea applies here. Uh, and so how uh, these input levels of transcription factor drives these uh, different patterns of gene expressions 
in living embryos. And that's something we want to find out with these uh, live imaging approaches. And so for that, what I did, I built a, a simple microscope that allows me to image as well as perturb uh, uh, using optogenetic uh, tagged proteins in a very controlled manner. And so the way the system works, we have our protein of interest that is tagged with a certain export system. What it does, as you shine the blue light, this whole protein complex or protein could be exported from out of the cell nucleus to cytoplasm. And so here this shows how this tool could be applied. So now what you're looking at, these are individual nucleus and tagged with particular proteins here uh, with Lexi. As we turn on our blue light, you can see you can export protein out of the cell nucleus uh, in a very spatial uh, confined manner by just using these uh, simple tools. And so here, this movie shows you in real time what is happening, uh, how we could specifically perturb the system by using light uh, without affecting much of the other signaling pathways. And that will allow us to now interrogate how these transitions are occurring in living embryos. So now these, uh, we can further quantify how the nuclear concentration uh, drops upon light stimulation that you can see the nuclear uh, concentration drops quickly upon light stimulation within a uh, minute. And by keeping the blue light, you can uh, achieve low level of concentration of your protein of interest. As you turn off your blue light, it quickly goes back in the nucleus. And then we quantified how these uh, dynamic parameters look like. So one of the details here we want to quantify is the export rate. So that will be when you turn on the blue light. So export rate for all these tagged with Lexi, whether they are dummy proteins or certain transcription factors. You can see the blue ones, those are indicating the export kinetics. So that's roughly around half a minute. But the import kinetics depends on the protein size and uh, uh, import kinetics of that uh, um, certain other proteins, those are responsible. So basically what we have this system where we could achieve these spatial and temporal perturbation uh, on a scale of minutes and a couple of my, a hundred, uh, tens of micron uh, scale. So that will allow us to now interrogate how these uh, uh, transcriptional networks are connected in, in time. And so to kind of now give you idea how putting these together, so Lexi system will allow me to export my protein or transcription factor of interest uh, that is indicated here, how the concentration uh, changes upon light stimulation. And now with the live cell reporter, uh, here we are trying to image certain uh, target gene response by fluorescent markers. And that we can follow also with the time. So now you can see each individual nuclei have these single spots of these mRNA production. So idea is now we can manipulate the transcription factor and then try to visualize how these uh, gene output looks like. So now you can see here clearly as we deplete the transcription factor out of the cell nucleus, the transcriptional activity goes out uh, or there, there is no transcriptional activity. So this kind of works nicely. It shows, okay, system is responding to light. And now we were more interested in terms of like understanding the dynamics and detail. So here, this particular movie shows you how the transcriptional output is governed or totally controlled by blue light pattern in the center part of the embryo. And these individual dots are the mRNA spots. So now you can see clearly uh, how uh, quickly we can deplete those uh, mRNA production by just using light. So this is like doing a biochemistry in a, in a living uh, embryo by just using light as external input. And so, so going back to question, what specific questions we were uh, kind of interested in. So one of the um, kind of uh, detail we want to kind of uh, dig into how these regulatory interactions occur in the cell nucleus 
uh, to decide the gene output. And so there we can think of uh, uh, this particular good example that we studied in the lab for a long time, where we know uh, transcription factor bicoid can work as a um, activator for these certain genes, and these genes could be turned on. And now by using those live reporters, we could follow their activity. And so what we're trying to target now, whether we could understand how uh, directly this transcription factor can activate this uh, sensor, you can say as an mRNA output that we could visualize. And also if there is some detail about there, there could be some network level interactions where uh, transcription factor affect one mRNA production that becomes protein and then eventually feedbacks into the system. Or uh, a particular gene could have a multiple these binding sites for transcription factor and how these different sites could regulate the gene output. So these are the basic questions we are kind of interested in. And so we try to establish that system uh, and now trying to find out the dynamics. So now you can see here what we are looking into is mRNA uh, signal on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. So now you can see the control shows you when there was a no perturbation, so it has certain dynamics. As you can see, by using light, I remove my transcription factor to low concentration. As I turn it off, quickly it goes back in the nucleus to high level. And now you can see within two minutes, this gene activation goes up again. And it kind of follows now the, the uh, control system. And so now with that, we kind of not only did for one given embryo, but for multiple embryos and by uh, we quantified how these response changes occur after these stimulations. So this particular example kind of shows uh, how direct activation by transcription factor can lead to these gene output, which is nice. And, and also we try to test how uh, quickly that occurs uh, um, in reversible manner as well as you deplete the concentration by using blue light, you can see the activity for mRNA production goes down compared to control. So next we kind of build up not only for one given gene for multiple genes. Now you can see the summarized data here. So here you can see for different genes, the activation, which is the response time when you induce those perturbation, whether that occurs within a couple of minutes or it's delayed. So now there are kind of two details here. One is positive and negative. That means a transcription factor can work as an activator or a repressor. And so now in this particular example, we found two kind of uh, interesting detail. So these two transcription factor or genes are activated within a couple of minutes, positively interacting with the transcription factor, but other two genes have a negative um, within five minutes or 20 minutes. So then we kind of uh, try to find out how these delayed network interactions are occurring uh, for this particular gene called Krupal. So now what we try to find out here, sorry, uh, by perturbing our transcription factor, we affect one particular gene here called Giant. That's, that has a strong repressive effect uh, for this gene that we see slow response. So with this, our system, when we manipulate the transcription factor, we can see these two gene expression patterns are complementary, and so that they kind of interact with each other and affect uh, the gene expression. So here, this is one good example for us to kind of show uh, how the network effect can arise. And by using some of these optogenetic tools, we could find out the time scales and details about the interactions. And so next, what we try to kind of dig into whether um, uh, we could find out uh, uh, one of the fourth gene or last gene that we were interested in. So now you can here see for multiple embryos, the gene activity in dark uh, upon light stimulation, you can see within a couple of minutes, the expression goes up really high. And so we were kind of puzzled why this activation is going in reverse direction. And so what we try to find out by 
using di these live reporters, we have these multiple sites where transcription factor can bind and activate this gene activity. So we could kind of manipulate these binding sites in such a way we found out, okay, one particular uh, enhancer or site is much more uh, responsible for these uh, reverse behavior of gene activation. And so now you can see here the dark uh, or control system and the light stimulated system for two manipulations. So this particular uh, site is much more sensitive to transcription factor changes compared to this particular uh, over here. And so now with this rapid system, we could find out how uh, these binding sites are, are um, kind of chosen uh, in such a way that uh, uh, they can have a very different binding affinity towards transcription factors. So let me kind of summarize with this, our tool, what we could find out how direct uh, gene activation can occur by transcription factor its time scale and uh, whether it's reversible or there's some memory to it. Then we also try to find out how uh, delayed activation can occur in case of pattern formation of this particular developing embryos. And we found out what are the components are involved in that particular uh, complex dynamics. We also try to find out how multiple binding sites for these genes can uh, can drive these gene expression uh, for this particular gene over here. So let me kind of uh, go into the summary here. And so what I try to uh, give you some sense about how these quantitative optogenetic tools could be applied to understand how um, at the transcriptional level, how these dynamics are very complicated and we could gain insight about their complex regulation. And in our experiments, what we found how these complex network interactions are occurring and probably those are uh, defining the patterns uh, for the gene expression. And we also found some examples how different binding sites or we call them enhancer elements could play a role uh, to define the transcription factor activity at the transcriptional side. What I want to kind of uh, give you some more detail what I'm currently doing. So I joined uh, St. Jude as a research scientist and in Scott Blanche's lab, what we're trying to understand how these uh, cellular transition occur uh, over several days of certain stimuli called here, growth factor called TGF beta. So upon stimulation with TGF beta, you can see these epithelial looking like cells transform into very different cell types here they have a very wide range of these uh, tube protrusions, uh, dynamics, and we, we're trying to now understand uh, by using different live reporters to understand how this transition is occurring over several hours or days uh, after this uh, um, stimulation. And so these are kind of cell types you can, uh, um, you may be familiar with, these are the same phenotypic um, state of the cell as the cancer cells. Where after becoming uh, metastatic, they can migrate from one tumor site to other tumor site. And now we're trying to understand what are the uh, translational program that driving this uh, rapid transition uh, on, on, uh, on several days to, um, uh, and whether these processes are uh, to what extent these are reversible. So with that, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, my current funding and lab, uh, Scott Blanche's lab, and previous work that has been done at uh, um, Princeton University, where I had a good uh, kind of experience learning about fruit flies, optogenetics, and building, uh, applying some of these live imaging modality to understand how uh, certain stimuli could be interpreted by cells in terms of like gene activation and repression. So with that, I stop here. Okay, Anna, thank you. Um, great talk. So um, I haven't seen questions. Um, if you have questions, you can just uh, um, 
just uh, you know open your camera ask okay so let me ask you a question on that yes no I, I think your system is very interesting uh very uh attractive for this you know after that you can uh, really examine this uh, uh, gene regulation so I noticed you try to study the the dynamics right mm -hmm. the temperature change thing um have you thought of using this thing you can I assume you can also get this a uh, dose response curve right you know somehow you can control your transfer factor dose then to see how how the uh, transcription dynamics the reason I'm interested in this is you know I don't know if you know this my uh, we have a recent paper uh mm -hmm. try to infer those uh, gene regulation relation from single cell uh uh R seq data Mm -hmm. Right, so we, we assume we, we show we can in principle we can uh, infer those kind of dose response curve. Mm -hmm. So I think this system can be a way probably see if I can test, right, get the quantity for dose response curve. Yes, yeah, so that that is something. Yeah, that's a very interesting uh, question, and we were actually interested in exploring uh, next level how we could understand these different dosage are uh, giving uh, the gene output and how. Trans uh, how transcription at the transcription level that is occurring. So for that, we also kind of did some experiment where we we could actually create specific dose across the length of these embryos. Mm -hmm. And so we do see uh, at certain dosage of these uh, linear gradient or linear morphogen, uh, um, we do see uh, those transcriptional activity. So I'm I'm kind of like uh, we did those experiment that kind of make sense. And now I think next level we want to kind of incorporate some of these modeling to really understand what is happening in terms of like uh, how those uh, different dosage are giving rise to those uh, gene output. Yeah, and also it's not just one transfer factor, a combination of transfer factor, right? Yeah, so that will be my lab is working on in a way uh -huh. to combination, right? So you can. So uh, that that is somewhat kind of limited with the experimental system, but I think but but in a given cell probably you could have at least two light sensitive proteins or transcription factors, and then try to look at their how they cross regulate certain genes uh, and try to find out those details.